Hello and welcome to another update video about silver. Yeah, the silver chart shows us a potential five wave move to the upside. Um, we looked at it yesterday already and I indicated to you one more high and we might be able to count it as five waves. It is worth though to be still skeptical about it and we're going to talk about that overall wave count here. Wave one to the upside, yeah, wave two to the downside and within the wave two, um, we have an A wave, we have a B wave as a triangle and the C wave down, which can still get another low, okay? So it is possible to count it with another low. It is also possible to count this move down complete, even though it's not reliable yet, okay? I And therefore, in this region, that's why we have it on the chart, this support area, yeah, we, we watch for bottoming structures. And I indicated to you, if we see five waves up, then we're going to take this very, very seriously, track it very carefully, but still be skeptical about it until we see a first deep pullback. As always, it is going to be the first deep pullback that is going to give us some evidence um, or further evidence as to whether silver has bottomed here. It's not only the five waves up that we need, it's the three wave pullback afterwards as well. And it is just worth to be skeptical about it until we have um, more evidence. Okay, that's that's at the moment the case in many, many markets. Like the S&P, it's worth to be skeptical as well. Um, gold as well, even though also on the gold chart, we've seen potential five waves up. I mentioned that in the gold video. Yeah? So it's not that we have crystal clear evidence yet. We are still in a potential trend change situation. And these are usually the most fragile ones. So what I want to take a look at with you is here this move to the downside and the move to the upside. Um, so at the moment, in the white wave count, this could simply be an A, B, C structure. We are still within resistance that I showed you yesterday and I highlighted to you it goes all the way up to $22.40. Um, but I said to you, if we see one more high, we might want to track it as... Um, potential five wave move. Um, it could be five because it, it really depends on how I count this decline. There are, honestly, I don't even show you all the options I'm tracking. It is technically possible, not in this wave count, not, not so well in this wave count, but it's possible to say we had a wave four here, okay? And then a five, where's the five, where's the five here? To count the wave five as complete there. Not so much in this wave count, doesn't look that good. I uh, would need to change a few things up there, but you know, it's all about narrowing down the probability. So that's possible. I need to know what is much more important than knowing, you know, the, the detailed wave count and how it, it's more important to know, okay, could a low be in here? Technically, yes. And yes, it might be a bit of a truncation there, but valid. Truncation means the wave five is a little shorter than the third. But then I would need to count five waves up, which I can do. So I want to consider it. Okay, I want to. The, the possibility exists. Exists. It's not highly likely yet that we have bottomed, but it's certainly a reasonable expectation, and therefore we are going to track it, especially because we can count five up. Had we just broken down from where we were yesterday, I would tell you right, we didn't get five waves up. Uh, very clear three waves, and now you can still interpret it as three. And it would be a wave four with one more wave down to come, but um, I can count it as five and therefore it's now worth tracking the potential that the low is in. Now, what does that mean? That means in any deeper pullback, the price must hold the last swing low at $20.70. Um, and I will also tell you what would increase the likelihood further that the low is in. So let's assume a low is in then these would be five waves up one two three four five would be close to the top now maybe it stretches a little higher possibly to round about twenty two dollars and forty but then um, even if the low is in we should get an abc pullback abc that would be a wave one to the upside the wave two to the downside it would need to hold a support area so obviously needs to hold a higher low okay um and that would roughly be, I can only measure it against the last high, that would be between $20.95 and $21.37, yeah? So we don't want it to break at any time below $20.95, okay? So 
and okay, so let's assume it holds it. Then we want to see it's doing this five up, okay, three waves down, another five wave move to the upside, three down, five up. That would give us further evidence. Um, what would be more important is that we are moving beyond a level that we call the 100% extension. So I'm only talking about, you know, what is important now from an analytical point of view. Now, where you enter as a trader, that's, of course, a different question because that depends on your risk tolerance, your risk appetite, your portfolio. Yeah, how many, you know, how much, how much silver do you already have? Okay, do you have nothing? It might be worth getting in, you know, but do you have already a lot and where did you buy? See, that those are all questions that only you can answer, really. Um, but you need to understand that we're here in a situation where a low could now form, but we cannot confirm it yet. Now, one reasonable one reasonable trade might be to wait now for the pullback, set a stop below the low and um, see what happens. OK, it's just that is not yet a high probability scenario, in my opinion. But what I want to emphasize is if we break above something that we call the 100 percent extension, which means we have this length, we get the pullback. And then we measure the length of this move up, the first five up, compare it to um, what, what would happen then, right? So measure against the, the low that will be made. And there's a so-called 100% extension level. Basically, that what I count here as wave one potentially in a bullish scenario would be the same length as this move up. And we need to move beyond that. That would, so that might land around, I don't know, $24, probably not. No, it should be lower, but 22, 23. We're already at 22. Okay, it's probably more, it's probably more like 23. So let me just, let me just give you an uh, estimate. So let's assume we come down. Yeah, 2250 roughly, okay, 2250 to $23. We want to break above that range. I will be able to give you a precise level for that when we get to it. Um, that would increase probabilities further that we're actually moving up in a larger five wave move to the upside because otherwise it can just be an A, B, C structure and can still break down. But yeah, that's sort of what I'm watching now. Um, certainly tracking the potential the low is in, not entirely convinced yet, still skeptical. That's sort of how, how this needs to be approached, okay? Um, and as we then break out, you know, and the probabilities build, then we can get more confident. But yeah, there is not much more to add at the moment, I think, about silver. Um, I hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And yeah, last week we started our stocks and S&P 500 service. If you're interested in daily updates about the S&P 500 and selected stocks, check it out. You can find the links uh, in the video description. It's the Patreon link and then you can check it out. And um, yeah, thank you very much. Bye bye.